Okay, in this video here, we're going to carry on from um, the classifications of buildings by major occupancy. We're going to carry on with that um, that concept. So there's another video that kind of talks about about that. Um, but we need to look at what happens when you have multiple occupancy classifications when you're trying to uh, figure out the construction safety requirements for your building. So just as a, a recap, um, we looked at 312 in another video here where you figured out the, you know, saw the different classifications um, in the code and then the fire separations between, uh, between those major occupancies, basically. Now we're just going to cruise ahead to um, section 3.2. And um, it's in section 3.2.2. And so in section 3.2.2, we're going to zoom ahead here to 3.2 four which is buildings with multiple major occupancies and then basically 3224 just tells you that um, if you have a single occupancy so you have a building that's all group d or whatever then it's just this section is going to tell you um, the safety requirements for the um, for the building based on building height and building area and uh, number two says okay well what if you have more than one major occupancy so you have a maybe a group d building and a group e in that building as well and then it tells you that, uh, okay, well, you got to look at sections 225, 228 to understand what to do there. And so in 3225, this is really important here. So in determining the fire safety requirements of a building in relation to each of the major occupancies contained with therein, the building height and building area of the entire building shall be used. Okay, so what that's saying is if you have a group D in a building and a group E in the same building, you're going to consider the building area of the entire building for each one of those major occupancies. So let's just take a look at that um, graphically here. So if we had a building that looked like this in plan and we had a group, um, say, D occupancy on this side and a group E occupancy on this side, if this entire footprint of this building, let's just say it was a thousand square meters, then this would be a thousand square meter group E building and it'd be a thousand square meter group D building. That's what that article is saying. And if you had three three um, uses in there, same thing would apply. Now there are some exceptions to that called the minor occupancy, which we'll get to later, but let's just say we did this. So we had a group E down here, so you got a closed store, maybe you got a a dentist in there and maybe you got a restaurant on this end so again if this was a thousand square meter building area then um, what that article is telling you is that you have a thousand square meter group e building a thousand square meter group d building and a thousand square meter a2 building so again you're, you're using the, in, the entire building area for each each major occupancy and then sentence 3226 just says, okay, well, if you have these multiple major occupancies, um, each one of those different uses in here, so you're, you know, when, when we go to class of, or figure out the safety requirements for the building, we're going to look at it from an E standpoint of 1,000 square meters. We're going to look at it at a D standpoint of 1,000 square meters and an A2 at 1,000 square meters. And then what, what sentence 3226 is saying is that you're going to take the most restrictive requirement um, and apply it to that building. And again, in there it just says, um, so you take the most uh, restricted major occupancy contained shall apply to the whole building. And now let's just take a look at a situation of superimposed major occupancies. And so in 3227, superimposed major occupancies is pretty much telling you the exact same thing for a vertical situation in a building. So um, in a building in which one major occupancy is located entirely above another major occupancy, the requirements of the subsection for each portion of the building containing a major occupancy shall apply to that portion as if the entire building were part were of that major occupancy. So again, it's it's saying you got to take the entire um, building. But it is also important to note here that it says the requirements of the subsection for each portion of the building containing a major occupancy shall apply to that portion as if the entire building were of that major occupancy. So let's just take a look at this situation. So um, say you have a building that's three stories here and the main floor has got an E use and the upper floors are residential, so C groups. 
So basically, in this case, you know, let's just say it was um, an 800 square meter building area. So you would have a, you would be looking at the construction requirements of this building as a 800 square meter E building, three stories, a three story 800 square meter C building, and a three story 800 square meter or C building, I guess, again, um, you know, but it could be again, like, like in the previous one, we could say, well, what if, what if there's um, offices on the second floor and then residential on the top floor? So you would be looking at this as a um, a three-story 800 square meter E building, a three-story 800 square meter D building, and a three-story 800 square meter C building. And then and then remember that um, you would you would then you know find each one of those as a, as a three-story, and then you would apply um, you would apply that for each th those requirements for each portion of that building containing. Um, that major occupancy basically. And so what that means in practicality um, situation here is let me just clear this, clear this off and, and show this. Um, you could have say a we'll just use a similar example here. Let's do something like that. Four stories, and you know, this is very common um, construction type to have say an E use or D use or A2 on the main floor and then have residential above um, so uh, again you would say okay well this is a four-story e building a four-story c building but you might find that the construction requirements on the e um, say require a two-hour fire rated floor so you'd say okay well that floor is going to be two hours right there but when you look at it as a four-story c building maybe it says well the fire rating on the floor only has to be one hour and so when you talk about the portion of the, you know, it applies to that portion of the building, basically what can happen here is that the fire separations for the C portion could be one hour in that case. And then the, um, you know, the bottom one remaining the two hour like that. So that's how you would look at the, um, applying it to that portion of the building. But again, you're still looking at that E as a four story building. And then sentence two just talks about if, if um, you have one major occupancy over top of another one, uh, the fire resistance rating of the floor assembly between the major occupancies shall be determined on the basis of the requirements of this subsection for the lower major occupancy. So in, in that case, um, you know, you, I, guess, I guess you could say if, if the, let's reverse this, let's just say that you um, did a little bit of homework on this and you figured out that this building as a four-story E only needed one hour, let's say, and you did your investigation, and this build and the and the the C as a four-story, let's say, needed two hours. Then you would apply. That would be okay to apply there because you're applying it based on the lower um, the lower occupancy the lower major occupancy basically. But that's kind of a bad example because it's actually not usually that way. If you get into those mixed use buildings, it's, it's the other way around. Once you do your homework, you'll realize that that's probably gonna be the two hour or what have you. And these ones will be the one hour, if I remember correctly off the top of my head. But nonetheless, that's that's what it's saying basically. K3228 um, exceptions for major occupancies. So this one here, um, the building code doesn't use the terminology um, minor occupancy, but it's widely it's widely used. At least um, it was in my world. And so the, with the exceptions, it basically just says, okay, well if you have a, if you have an occupancy um, of a building, but that occupancy is less than 10% of the floor area of the story that it's in, then you don't need to consider that major occupancy as a major occupancy basically or that occupancy as a major occupancy so that's where the term kind of minor occupancy comes in so just looking at that scenario you know you you could have a building that looks like this let's say and there's a unit right here on the main floor that's maybe uh you know maybe it's a coffee shop or something like that so a2 and then um maybe this is an e right here and again this is a d right here if if the um, entire building area of this was a thousand square meters again, but this space right here was only 90 square meters. 
then that, that 90 square meter space is less than 10% of this whole floor area. So, so basically what it's saying is that this would just be a 1000 for the purposes of, of classifying, you know, the overall building safety requirements. Um, this would just be a 1000 square meter E building and a 1000 square meter D building. You would not have to look at this as a 1000 square meter A2 building because that, that is less than that 10% of the, of the area of that floor area, basically. It doesn't mean that you're not going to, um, you know, fire rate that wall to the requirements between an A2 and E. It just means for the overall building um, safety requirements, you wouldn't have to consider it as that. And so one other uh, scenario we should look at here is we haven't really drawn any basements in this building. So uh, if we had this situation right here, we had say F3 occupancies below grade, so parkades, um, E on the main floor and C's above. This now would be a three-story E building, a three-story C building, but it's also a three-story F3 building at that point. So it's still three stories, but you have to uh, consider um, the, you have to consider the, the occupancy, major occupancy F3 as well, even though it's below grade. Now there is an exception to that. So if we just go back to our code here and go back to um, we'll go to three, two, one, two storage garage considered as a separate building. So this article, um, if the if the under grade floors are storage garage, so parkade. Um, if you read the definition of storage garage, it's basically parkade. If if um, if it's used primarily as a parkade, and you meet all these requirements in here, okay, so it's got like two hour floors and things like this, among other things. If you apply all these requirements in this section here to the floors below grade, then this article is saying then you don't need to consider it as part of that building. So back to here, if you were to apply 3, 1, or 3, 2, 1, 2, so let's just say that, so for this portion here, we're going to apply whatever that was, 3, uh, we're going to apply 3, 2, 1, 2. So this portion here is 3, 2, 1, 2 has been applied. Now we're back to um, this being a three-story E building only and a three-story C building. So that, that can that can be used to one's benefit. However, sometimes when you calculate this, like if you might look at it and say, well, as a three-story F3 building, maybe it didn't it didn't cause any um, any more restrictive requirements on the building. So um, you might not have to apply um, um, this, this article 3212, but um, it, it is used widely, I would say, in um, you know, um, high rise buildings with parkades underground. And then I'm just going to move ahead here to 32215 because this one's kind of important. So if you have stories below ground, I mean, obviously, if you're using that 3212 sentence, then those, those requirements would apply. But if you just have other stories below ground, like maybe it's not a parkade, right? So 3212 is very specific to it being a storage garage or, or parkade. So what if you have something else down there? Well, then you'd go to 32215, and then this would um, give the requirements, basically, for the, for the floors below ground, basically. So this is going to supersede... Um, some other findings elsewhere for, I guess, the stories um, above ground because this sentence is specific to stories below ground. And that uh, summarizes multiple major occupancies. And, um, you know, the next video we have in relation to this will start to move us into um, the sections between 32220 to 32290, I think it is, um, where you, you look at your major occupancies and you start um, Figure, you're figuring out what are the requirements are based on, um, again, the, the major occupancies in the building, how many stories it is, the building area, and sometimes um, how many streets it faces.